It's Tuesday, September the 5th, and this is Photo Walkthrough, Tutorial 9, Chapter 3. Hi, I'm your host John Arnold, and this week we'll be adding a sepia toning to Michelle's gun image, adding even more grunge layers using those Nagel texturing brushes, and there's big news about the first ever Photo Walkthrough competition. First of all though, some of you had noticed that I hadn't posted a source image for this tutorial. I wasn't really sure if I should, since it's not my own photograph, but at viewer Nicholas Mnuchin's suggestion, I asked Michelle if she minded, and she was kind enough to say yes. So if you head over to the Photo Walkthrough tutorial page for Tutorial 9, you can download a version of Michelle's PSD file that you can use to follow along. Now next week is the week of the Tips from the Top Floor Photography Workshop in Tübingen, Southern Germany, and I'll be there helping Chris out with that, so unfortunately I won't be here to do a show. Sorry about that folks, but I do have something fun that you can be working on during my week off. Yes, it's competition time. I've been wanting to run a photo walkthrough competition for a few months now, and ColorVision, the company that makes the very popular Spider 2 monitor calibration tool, has offered a Spider 2 Pro as a competition prize. For those of you that don't know what a monitor calibration tool is, it's a doohickey. Yeah, a thingamabob, that you hang in front of your monitor while you run some software that displays different colours on your screen. The thingamabob looks at the colours on the screen and builds a colour profile for your monitor that makes it display colours as close to perfectly as possible. Usually, after calibrating your monitor, you'll be amazed at the difference, and the Spider 2 software lets you flip back and forth at the end of the process so you can see what changed. The Spider 2 works on both a Mac and a PC, and I actually bought one of these things myself last year. It's something I use regularly, and I love the results. This isn't a paid endorsement, it just so happens that I have one and I like it. And now you have the chance to win one for yourself too. To enter the competition, all you have to do is take a photograph inspired by the competition topic, and since the prize is a colour calibration tool, I decided that the topic should be colour. Yes, that's colour spelled with a U, but I'll let you Americans enter as well. Once you've taken a picture, enter it by uploading it to Flickr and adding the tag PWChallenge1. It's as simple as that. Submissions are limited to one entry per viewer, and the competition deadline is October the 6th, 2006. That's one month from now. The entries will be judged by myself and some of the other folks at the Photocast Network. I'm rounding up a posse as we speak, so grab your cameras. Ready, set, go! PhotocastNetwork.com Your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocast Network Com. Okay, let's get started. This is where we left the image last week, and if I just bring back my palettes so that we can see what we're doing. Let's make that layers palette a lot larger. Right, we've got our background layer with the Canon image in it. We've got the layer where we just generally increase the contrast and sharpness of that whole of the Canon itself. And then last week we added this grunge layer where we put a lot of the texture onto the background. We're going to do some more of that today, but before we do, we're going to um, convert the image to a sort of a sepia tone. Now, when I say a sepia tone, uh, I don't mean your typical sepia photo filter. If you go to your Add Adjustment Layer button, and then click Photo Filter, then in the list here we've got sepia. Now, let me just move that so you can see the image. What this is actually doing, if I turn on and off the preview, you can see this is as though we are shooting through a, a brown sort of smoky coloured filter and even if we drag the density right up it isn't really going to give the kind of effect that we're after so that's not the kind of sepia that we're after. There is another way of doing this, um, I'll cover this quickly before we do the final tritone way. Um, if you use the hue saturation adjustment layer then in this dialog there's this colorize button here which allows you to select if you look I'm dragging the hue slider now it's colorizing the whole image and what that's basically doing is converting the image to black and white and then adding a color um, hue to all of the the light and mid tones um, within the image now 
to get a, a sort of a sepia, we want a sort of a browny yellow colour. So, sort of, I, I t there's, there's a lot of different kind of sepias, but I like them with a little bit sort of a, a reddy tinge to them. So maybe about there. Um, don't want it too saturated, but we do want to see the colour. So I would go about there, and I would leave the lightness alone because if we mess with the lightness, it's just going to go all badly wrong. So when it comes to the colourise, I almost never use the lightness slider. So that's that's one way of doing a uh, sepia toning on that image. And that's reasonably effective, so I'll just keep that around for a moment. But the way that Michelle did this on her image was to use this sepia tone layer here. And you can see if I just turn that layer on and off, that's the effect we're going for, which is not a million miles different from the effect that we got from the hue saturation. But the hue saturation has colour in the, in the highlights as well. So if you look at like the top of the wheels, where it's the very brightest parts of the image. Those parts, I personally like when I do a toning to have um, either solid blacks in the darkest areas or solid whites in the lightest areas. This, this hue saturation toning puts tone all the way through from darkest to lightest areas. They've all got that tone, in, that tone on them. So let's do the same thing but with a gradient map. So once again, it's an adjustment layer and I'm going to add an adjustment layer of type gradient map which is going to pop up the gradient map window and by default it's going to be black to white which is fine because what we actually want is a black to white gradient but with a colour in the middle so somewhere around about here I'm just going to click below the gradient and you can see that's added in a colour stop here and if I double click the colour swatch on the end of the colour stop I can pick a colour now so I'm going to choose a colour around about here, a sort of an orangey, sepia-ish colour. Um, yeah, about about there. And then I'm going to choose over here a sort of a... Uh, I'm trying to think what colour this is. It's kind of a leathery, sort of greyish yellow colour. It's a fairly desaturated orange, a fairly, a fairly dark desaturated orange. So let's press OK on that and see how our image is looking. Now that's looking pretty good. It's looking a little bit dark, maybe. So it's a little bit hard to see because this window is so large. But on our gradient, you can see we've got this midpoint between the colour we've just added and white. And I can drag that up and down to change the toning of the image. And if you look at the image over here, I'll just make this extreme so you can see it. You can see now we've added quite a lot of white into the lighter parts of the image. And that's going to be killing our detail a little bit, but it'll allow us to tone the image the way we want it. So it's looking a little bit flat there. If I drag the white just a little bit to the left, maybe just a little left of centre, we're just introducing some, some nice whiter tones towards the very highlights of that image. And I don't think we need to do much with our darker tones, but let's just have a quick mess with that, see how it looks. I'll drag the more of the colour. It's introducing more detail over here but it's also taking some of the contrast out of the image and just generally reducing the impact. Let's try it the other way. Definitely not the other way. It doesn't look good at all the other way. So I'm going to go sort of middle or just maybe left of middle slightly. And I think that's probably pretty good. So let's press OK on that. Press OK on that. and See how that looks. I think that's a pretty good stab at a, at a sepia tone. It's maybe a little dark, but not bad at all. Let's just compare that with how Michelle's looked. Yeah, now interestingly, look along the bottom of the barrel of the cannon there. I've got, um, on mine, it's all quite brown. If I turn that on Michelle's, it's actually almost black in the bottom there. So let's have a quick look at Michelle's gradient. Looks a lot like mine. Looks like Michelle's dragged that midpoint slider up a little, just to introduce a little more darkness. And she's dragged the whiteness slider in quite a lot. So if I press cancel on that, oh, and let's just look at her midpoint colour. Her midpoint colour is 40, 29, 57. So let's go back and play with ours. And our midpoint colour. Well, I got 39, 39, 29. So let's go for 40. What was it? 57. 
about there. So it's a, it's just a slightly lighter tone than the one that I had already, and it's almost exactly the same hue, just a tiny little bit more yellow in it. So I go OK with that, and then we're trying to go for those dark sort of almost blacks on the bottom of the barrel. So I'm just dragging that up until that goes sort of thicker brown black there. And then on the other side, Michelle had quite a bit more white than I have. So let's press OK on that. And that one, a little bit more contrast. I think Michelle was braver than I was there. So not bad at all. Pretty close. Right, and let's just compare that to go back with our hue saturation version. So that's our gradient map that we just worked on. And you've seen we had an awful lot of control there over the exact tones and where they appeared uh, on the lightness values in the image. I think by comparison the hue saturation version looks a bit a bit sad and flat really. We can be a lot more dramatic with our gradient map version. So I'm going to throw away the hue saturation version. I'm going to just rename this. I've double clicked on the name there. Sepia toning. And we don't need the layer mask, so I'll just drag the layer mask off and let it delete it. Right, so the next step, um, what's up above the sepia toning in Michelle's editing is the, um, let's turn off that grunge there. That's what we did last time, that's what we've just done. So next up is a grunge group. We've got two layers here that are adding more grunge to this image. So let's turn those on and see what those two layers do. I'll just turn off my grunge layer. From, that's my grunge layer from last time. So let's go and look at layer 7. Now, this is adding just general grain and sort of dirt pattern all over the basic image. And then it's doing a couple of important things. You can't really see this. I've, I've still got this grey layer in that I put in last time, just to allow us to see what these image, what these layers look like. Because without they, without that grey layer, you can't really quite get a feel for what's going on. But in another respect, you get a very important feel for what's going on. Because, as you can see, what Michelle's tried to do is we've got this light part of sky at the top here, and that that part of the sky there is a little bit distracting without this layer. It's just it, it's a little bit too close to the barrel of the gun. It, it almost joins the sky to the barrel of the gun, and it needs something just to, to take it down a little bit. And what Michelle's done is quite clever. She's not in in previous tutorials. What I might have done would would simply be to burn that down a bit. But what Michelle's done is she's used some of the texture that she's already adding to make it part of the texture rather than rather than just burning it down. And there's another light part of the image here, just on the right. Just, just up that right hand edge of the image, which could be just diminished a little bit as well. So, sort of making a plan for what we're going to do next. So if I turn that layer on and off, you can see we're just adding a lot of grain all over the general image. And we've got this chunk of grime at the top here that goes neatly over the sky. So I turn that on and off, you can see that's going over the sky. And also you can see here that Michelle's put a lot of grain into this bit here just to reduce half of that top bit. And I think you'll find that in the next bit, she's very carefully just sort of with the texture linked that that lighter portion there into the lighter portion here and just sort of uh, very neatly and, and very effectively flattening out a little bit the tones around the edge of the cannon giving it all a similar sort of texture so that when we apply the text later on it will appear to all be a sort of a consistent hole around the edge of the cannon. So let's do the same sort of thing on our own layers. Now, important, I've just realized my sepia toning layer um, is in the wrong place. In Michelle's version, we've got a grunge layer below the sepia toning and a couple of grunge layers above the sepia toning. And that's important because those grunge layers above the sepia toning, Michelle's actually used some colors in, in her, uh, where she was painting with her brush on, on those layers. So it will slightly affect the coloring of what we're seeing because obviously anything above the sepia tone gets higher up in the in the layer order will go over the top of it and any colors she's used will be applied on top of the sepia toning whereas any colors below will have been affected by the sepia toning so my grunge layer there should be below the sepia toning that's my grunge layer from last time which I didn't name let me name that grunge one 
and then our next two grunge layers are going to go above the sepia toning. So let's start again. Um, this layer is the one that I'm going to reproduce and we're going to add general noise all over the image. We're going to start dimming down that highlight in the sky and we're going to start dimming down some of that, uh, that slightly less vibrant highlight on the right. So above my sepia toning I want to make a layer above the sepia toning so I select the sepia toning and create, click the create new layer button. This is grunge 2 and we're going to head back into brush territory. So I'll drag my brushes palette in. I'm going to grab a brush. Now I've spent a bit of time preparing for the show so I know roughly which brushes I'm going to use but um, I suggest when you come to do this yourself you have a good long play with all of these brushes because there's some really interesting brushes in here and also don't be afraid to if, if, if a brush you want to use um, doesn't quite give you the effect you want don't be afraid to turn things on and off you know these these things are not um, uh, are, are not fixed in stone they're not in violet you can if you want to go in and turn on and off the color dynamics and all the rest so we'll do a little bit of that so I'm going to start off just by adding some general noise all over the uh, just over the second bottom part of the image here because it's looking a little bit noiseless in this area here and this area here so this brush in particular the first of the five tiles if you're counting up from the bottom is a good one for that and if I start painting across my image you can see it's what it's doing let me hide this brushes palette again just for a moment so you can see what I've done turn off my other grunge layer this is what I've just painted onto onto the new layer and you can see it's it's just scattered if I just do another paintbrush across the middle you can see that's just scattering this sort of grungy dirt pan all the way across now I don't want too much of it I think that much that I did to start with is pretty good um, so there's another brush just above we drag these brushes in this br brush just above uh, is also a very good for this let me turn on my layer there and you can see that layer is actually doing a little bit of color dynamic we've got some white and some gray going in there as well now I don't want that um, so I'm going to just drag my brushes palette in I'm going to turn off those color dynamics Control Z to undo that change and that's more the sort of effect that we're after so that first one that first brush I used just scattered it all over the image which is nice if you want just a sort of a general random dirt pattern uh, this this next brush up if you turn off the color dynamics allows us to put the dirt exactly where we want it in the image so you know pressing a little bit lightly there we can start painting the dirt in here there and everywhere so if I just back that off until I've got rid of that first lot I did I could now put the dirt in exactly where I want it but I liked the way it was so I'm going to go back to the previous brush and I'm just going to paint some dirt in just roughly like that and then with my eraser tool I'm just going to grab a big round brush and just dim that down a little bit I'm just very lightly wiping my eraser over the top just to sort of dim that down a little bit I don't want it too visible so let's see what that's done to my image if you look we can see some of the dirt appearing around here around here I actually want some in there so I'm going to go back to my brush tool and I'm going to go back to that version of the brush just above where I turned off the color dynamics I need to turn them on up turn them off again because I didn't save that preset so I'm just going to paint a little bit of dirt in there and also a little down there just to try and texturize some of these lighter portions where I want to try and diminish the um, diminish the lightness of the whole thing right now the next thing I want to do is attack that bit of sky at the top there and I'm going to do that with uh, a different brush which is let me find the brushes palette there's this group of four 305s here in the Nagel set the second one up is a great brush let me drag that out of the way and I'll show you what that does if I turn on that layer 
I'm sorry I keep turning this layer on and off, but it does make it a lot easier for you to see exactly what the brushes I've chosen are doing. And you can see that, that image, that brush there is giving us that, that wonderful cauliflower brain texture that we saw last week. Um, now if I just draw a lot of that, you can see that's still doing some colour dynamics. We've got some black and some grey and some white appearing in that, in that group of colours. So back in my brushes palette, I'm just going to turn off the colour dynamics drag the brushes palette out again and then just on the layer that we want to work on just going to brush in that texture over the top there now I'm going to be a little bit strong about it and then with my eraser just going to back it off with the eraser the reason I've done that is the way the brush works is it fills in more of the texture it gives us sort of a denser texture if I uh, press harder and then just back it off. And now the final step for this layer, I'm going to once again drag the palette back in and I'm going to grab, um, I want sort of a grainy brush. Okay, choosing my brush and then I'm going to find that palette, that brush again. That's the one. It's a grainy one. Now let's paint. Now you can see that's another one with a color dynamic. So I'm going to turn off the color dynamics there. Control Z to undo it. And that's giving us a nice sort of a, a thick grainy pattern. But it's probably a little too thick. So back in my brush, I'm going to go to brush tip shape and I'm going to drag the spacing right out and you can see it's going to draw our brush head a lot less often this way so if I paint with that now it's giving me a lot less a lot less brushes so let's undo that it's going to be more useful to me to try and do what I'm trying to do because the next step I want to do is turning that off I want to sort of diminish this area up here a little bit and then once again with my eraser and just with a big round soft edge brush just going to diminish that down a little bit just going to run the eraser over the top a little bit take down some of what I've done just right so that's our next grunge layer that's just adding general dirt and grunge and trying to correct some of the lightness problems uh, in the image and hopefully this is just separating that sky from the barrel of the gun. Now let's take a look at the next layer that um, Michelle did which is a similar sort of job we've got a the same sort of brainy texture but less dense here just to put more texture into this part of the image where it's a little bit textureless because obviously it's very blurred out at the moment um, and the uh, we don't want it joining too much up with the barrel of the gun so we've got a little bit of new texture down here there's another another region of, of not much texture there. So we've got a little bit of texture here, a little bit of texture here, a little bit of texture here. Let's just see that against our clear background. Actually quite a lot of texture down here and quite a lot of texture here. So we'll do the same thing. Above our grunge 2 layer, let's make a grunge 3 layer. And we'll do the same thing as we've just been doing. Once again, grab our brush not our eraser this time. I'm going to leave that in so that you can see I make mistakes as well. Right, so there's the texture that we're after. Now, just out of interest, um, the last the last layer we did all our grunge in black, and this time I noticed that when Michelle did it, this layer you can see she's using a sort of a brownie color which is nice because although this this sepia toning has added uh, a single consistent sort of tone through all the mid-tones of our, of our image it's not quite realistic if you're trying to look at a distressed old image uh, you've got to, on, on an old faded image you get bits that are faded out to different colors and you know particularly if it's a, uh, an old printing technique different bits of the image wear out at different speeds and bits might be scuffed uh, and the light affects things in different ways so you get sort of a, a sort of a mottled 
colouring to the whole thing. So uh, I've got an image I'm going to show you just at the end of today's video that, that does that extremely well. But just for now, let's pick a colour that's similar to the sort of colour that Michelle's used there. So I'm going to go for, let's go for around about there, a sort of a lighter yellowy orange. And sort of about there on the saturation. And a bit lighter. I think about there. Sort of a sort of a muddy yellowy colour. I'm just it's very hard to colour match. I'll just have to try a quick experiment. So with my brush on my new layer, make the layer visible. Oh, and I've still got those colour dynamics on, so let's undo those. I'm just turning off the colour dynamics. No, nope, that's that's not the right colour. Let's on our background colour, and then so it's quite a bit darker than that, isn't it? It's around about there. Yeah, let's go for around about there. And press OK on that. Make that a foreground colour. That's not bad. That's that's pretty close. So on our new grunge layer, I'll just turn off Michelle's version, and let's go back to our image. I don't ever recommend doing these these edits without looking at the real image because we're not, you know, we're, we're not just trying to copy what Michelle did here. I'm trying to show you reasons why why you would do these things, and so some of what Michelle did was add texture there, and some of what she did was add texture here. And I think we've got a little bit of texture over that bit there. Now that's that's quite strong. Once again, I'm going to grab my eraser and back some of that off a little bit. And as I back it off a bit, you can see if you look here, we've got this sort of mid sort of leather coloured toning, but you can see there's a bit of a bit of brown appearing in the uh, in the texture here, which is nice. That colouring that we chose for our brush is going to start giving it's an almost a sort of a coloured depth to the image. So we don't want just a single colour in here. Lots of colours that are sort of close to each other that tone together well will give it a more sort of realistic mottled feel. So I'm just going to, in certain places, I'm just going to add a little bit more colour. Now this is going a little bit off what Michelle did. But it was something that I've been inspired to do by this other image I'm going to show you before I finish today. So um, it, it's something that's interesting me a lot recently is working with colour and and how to get a, a simplicity of colour in an image as well as um, uh, an appropriate range of colours within an image. And then one final thing that Michelle did is there's a sort of a it's an almost a haze, a light sort of haze up in this top right corner as we start taking down some of these other elements of the picture, we start to realise that the corners, which are kind of key in this, um, it's, not, it's not quite, needs taking down a little bit up here as well. So I think what Michelle did, let me show you what Michelle did. I turn on that. You see she's actually added a bunch of colour up in that corner. So let's do the same sort of thing. Just going back to our new grunge layer. And I'm going to, and that sort of yellowy colour is not bad. Let's grab a, I want, an, I want a grainy brush again. I think the grainy brush I used last time was this one. And I think I turned off the colour dynamics. And I think I s slowed down the spacing a little bit. So up here, I'm just going to put in a bit of, colour there. Probably a little too much, but they, once again, just grab my eraser, back it off a little bit, and then once again, let's do a slightly darker tone. I've just chosen the darker colour there just to layer in some extra colour. And using that, that darker brown again. And once again, I'll just grab the eraser tool, back it down a little bit. Just trying to make it look so that it matches. 
Right, I think that's probably enough for Michelle's image today, and there's just enough time for me to finish up by showing you the other image that's inspired me this week, um, which is an image of Rothenberg, which was taken by a lady uh, called Agnes Liu um, from California, I believe. I guess this was taken in Rothenberg. Um, what what she's done here is just amazing. This image, as you see it, hasn't really been left in a drawer for 25 years like it looks. If I take it apart just a little bit, the bit that, that really... I mean, look at the number of layers she's got in this. There's so much work gone into this image, and it's worth it. I mean, it really is. The original image looks like that, and you can see that's a modern image. That's a, a, you know, it's a perfectly attractive image. It's a, it's a great viewpoint to take an image from, but what a difference that makes, eh? Now, the bit that interested me is the way she's got all these wonderful... We've got a sort of... Um, got a, a bit of yellow in the sky here, we've got sort of browns here, we've got grey, almost looks blue here, we've got sort of black here, we've got an almost sort of greeny colour here, and the way that uh, Agnes did this, if I just turn off these colour layers, she's done a couple of clever things, she's just made it all black and white, uh, there's probably another colour layer in there somewhere but I can't find it just now, um, she's made it all black and white with just a regular channel mixer, and then she's added a couple of, um, I mean, there's a couple of effects in here that look like bits have faded out nicely in the in the sun, and she's added some sort of fold effects and a scratchy effect here. Um, and then she's added, if you look at this layer here, she's got a big chunk of colour here. And I, I think the, the, the beauty of this is um, the appropriateness of the colours that she's chosen. Um, she's obviously got a very good eye for colour. So we've got this sort of um, pinky colour here, and then the next layer it adds a sort of yellowy colours here and here, and the next layer it adds some grey, just to sort of takes down some of those yellowy colours. And then she's added these wonderful reds through the middle, and she's also added, I like this one down here, this, this little chunk of colour that looks like where it's been scratched. Just add, just really boosts the colour around there, and I think all taken together, that really, really makes the image, it really makes the image pop. I think that's it's a fantastic work, uh, and when I saw it, I really wanted to show you, particularly as she was kind enough to send me the PSD file so that I can see how it was done. So um, I'm going to leave it there. Remember, I'm not around next week. I'm going to be teaching that, or helping to teach that uh, photo workshop in Germany. So I will be back in two weeks' time. In the meantime, if you'd like to take part in that competition, remember you can win that um, colour calibration tool uh, for your monitor. Um, head out, take a new photo. Please don't just go through your back catalogue and find an image that's appropriate to colour. This, is, this show is all about learning. Do go and find a subject that you can take a photo of today or sometime within the next month and make a new photograph for the, for the competition. I can't really tell if you submit an old one, but, but please don't. So go and find something new, come up with a new idea, take the photo and upload it to Flickr so that we can all see it. And good luck to everybody that wants to take part. I'll see you in two weeks' time. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com.